All right, guys, welcome back to the LPR Trading Group YouTube channel. It's Dave again. Today we had a little chat in the chat room, and uh, a lot of people were hyper focusing on these smaller time frame type trades without looking at the bigger picture or having complete disregard for the bigger picture. Now, the bigger picture is extremely important. What I mean by that is I like to check charts all the way up to the daily chart. And we'll do like what most people call a top-down approach. You look at your daily charts or your weekly charts and you break that down into maybe a one hour, 30 minute, 15 minute, and then use like five, three, one minute charts for entries, along with all of your footprint indications, your DOM, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I just noticed by observing the chat today that there were a lot of people just hyper focus on this like one minute price action. Um, and, and I mean, you can do that if you're super scalpy. Um, it's not really the way I trade or the way I like to trade. I do like to see what is the big picture and to either trade to or away from that big picture idea. Uh, I don't like to form a huge bias because things can happen throughout the day. Uh, the market can develop, it can change. But having an overall idea of where we're sitting on the chart is a really, really good idea before you dive into a day and just completely handcuff yourself trading, uh, you know, nonsense oscillation on the one minute chart without a bigger idea. So what I've done here is I've deleted everything on my chart. Now, this is just a daily bar chart. Okay, so it's a simple bar chart on the daily. And what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to mark this chart up and then I'm going to go through three more charts actually and kind of show you how I would top down approach this thing. All right, so we'll start with the daily chart here and we can see we're in an obvious range, right? We're going sideways in a range. The range is rather large. We're all the way down at 3,600 and all the way up at, uh, say, 4,400 here. You know, we've got an 800 point range, which is fantastic. It is tightening, so it makes these days a little bit harder to trade. We have had some liquidity issues the past few days, just not a lot of participation. We do have CPI and I believe it's FOMC tomorrow. Uh, we did come off a long weekend. So I mean, all this stuff is understandable. And it's something you also have to learn as a new trader that every day is not going to be the day for you to trade or the day for you to execute your top priority uh, setups. We're trading probabilities. We're not trading time. You go to a job and you work nine to five and you get paid by the hour. As a trader, you could sit on the chart for two or three hours and not take a single trade. Why? Because the opportunity did not present itself. Therefore, we sat on the sidelines and we did not take a trade. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start marking up this daily chart. Now, what I want to mark first off are extreme pivot highs and lows. So I've established we're inside of a range. Now I want to know where the pivot highs and lows are. Why? These could be bigger time frame traders, swing traders, position traders, it could be like their targets, right? Their potential targets. If you're long from down here in this area, maybe your target is to swing high. At that point, we might be able to expect, um, you know, these buyers to start selling up in this area, shorts to start getting stop over, stopped out over this area, which essentially provides this liquidity zone for the market to grab liquidity above pivot highs and maybe ebb and flow in the other direction. So we want to have these on our charts so we know when the market is getting close to these areas, we can really keep an eye out for them. So I'll start by dropping lines on this chart here. I'll mark this pivot high here, which is a very established area. We already peaked above this pivot high, above this pivot high, and we're showing some interest in this area. So if you were a trader, if you were a trader and you were short, uh, I want to say like, you know, a retail trader, whatever you might be, and you were short and you saw this, this, and this, ideally, where would you want to put your stop? It's going to be somewhere over this area, right? If you want to stay in your short position, you want to put your stop somewhere over this area. Let's call this the little fish, okay? Well, the little fish are all going to have their stop over this area. And what the market's going to do is it's going to realize that it's going to come up. It's going to try and sweep all that liquidity. So these covers on the short side are turning into buys. Now you also have the breakout buyers that are buying the breakout. With that, uh, bigger money, algos, smart money, whatever you want to call it, is going to realize this is a large liquidity pocket up here. And the probability is the liquidity is going to get swept. And if you can get a setup after this sweep, uh, chances are that you're going to be able to get a trade to the downside. Now, when we're looking for a trade to the downside off here, are we looking for a complete tank of, tank of the market? Likely not, right? Uh, I day trade, so I would build my targets off of intraday price action or previous day price action, and I would take those types of targets, which might be a 10, 20, 30, 40 point move, okay? 
All right, so we've got this high rate here, and we can mark this whatever we want. I'll just modify the text, and I'll say BLIC. So this is um, a common term that's going around now, uh, especially with all this ICT stuff going on. We'll just keep it very simple uh, and call this buy side liquidity here, okay? I'd mark this pivot low down here. I would change this color here to red, and I would just rename this and say this is our sell side liquidity, okay? So this is, if price gets under this area, anyone who is long is gonna be likely looking to stop out under this area, okay? We sweep liquidity in these areas, we look for setups intraday on our footprints, on our charts, on our DOM, rotations of delta, whatever setups we're looking for, we're looking for them at this time in these big key macro areas, okay? So these are two bigger areas we have marked. I'm actually gonna take this right here and I'm going to copy and I'll move this guy up here because this is another pivot high that we could have a liquidity trap above, okay? We'll take this guy right here, we'll copy and move this and I'll bring this all the way over here, okay? Down to these lows. So now we've established this smaller type of range inside of the larger range. And now this range will act the same, right? If we pop above this area, we could look for liquidity being grabbed up here. If we get below this area, we could look for liquidity being grabbed below here. I mean, the, the, the setups and the trading that we do, this is not the point of this video. This is showing you guys how to mark up your charts to have a bigger macro picture on what's going on. Okay, so now once I have these bigger areas marked right here on the daily chart, what I like to do is I will go into this guy, and this guy is my TPO chart, okay? So with my TPO chart, let me just make sure. Okay, good. Now with my TPO chart, what I like to mark or what I like to look at is the volume side of the TPO and how much time we spent in a certain area. So the areas I'll be looking to mark up will be lower volume areas like these areas right here and the big points of control. If there is time spent in a given area and the volume is also spent in this given area, so we've got lots of time in this area plus the bulk of the volume in the area, this is just a balanced area, right? If we have something like this on the TPO where we do not, what we spend most of our time down at the lows, but we put most of our volume in at the highs, uh, this is where I'm starting to look for possibly a market transition or a change in direction. We can see today, for example, we spent a lot of time here. We printed most of our volume here, okay? So now what I'll do here is I will grab this horizontal tool again. I'll either use this or we can use a rectangle tool. I'll take this, I'll change the line color to purple and we will label this right here LVN. Okay, this is our this is a low volume node on our TPO chart or volume profile chart, a low volume node. These are some things, these are things that I'm interested in here as well. We've got our LVN that pops right up here on the chart, so we know that everything is being transferred over to the chart that we're looking to trade. This is very important, so we don't have to jump back and forth so much, okay? Now we have more LVN down in this area. I wanna look for naked low volume nodes. We can look for high volume nodes as well, right? peaks and valleys, whatever you want to call them. These are just areas that I want to have on the chart, marked up, bigger picture, so I know exactly what is going on when price comes down there. We'll go into here. I will make these a similar purple color. Okay, we'll hit okay on this. I'll take this and we can extend the drawing and I'll also drop some text on that and I'll say this is also an LVN, and it's not just a single uh, tick value or one point, it's actually a bulky area, right? This is about a three point LVN. So we'll mark that with a box. Now we go over to our bar chart here and we can see our LVN box got dropped in right there at 41.17 and 41.20.50. Head back over here to our TPO to see if we can find anything else. 
Uh, down in this area right here, we've got this yellow line. This yellow line represents a naked point of control on the volume side of our TPO. Okay, so it's a naked point of control. I want to mark this just like this. We'll go chart properties. We'll change this color here. The width can stay at two. I'll modify the text and I'll say this is a naked volume point of control. Okay, so we've got a naked volume point of control sitting right below price. We go over here and the yellow is not showing up very well. We'll change that and make this easier. Color, let's go black. Perfect. Now we've got our NVPOC, okay, sitting right in this area. We'll go back to our TPO here. We've also got some naked volume point of controls below this area. I will mark this first one. Uh, as the days progress and price starts moving down, if that's what it wants to do, I will start marking these lower areas as well. Uh, just to keep our charts relatively clean, I don't want to go and just blast up my whole chart with you know, a bunch of drawings and text and this and that. Uh, we're supposed to be looking at these every day anyways. We're supposed to be going over them every Sunday and uh, marking up these charts again so we know exactly what's going on for the week and the coming days. Okay, go back here and we've got our NVPOC marked. Perfect. Now, we'll see if we find any more areas on the TPO that would be of interest. Uh, this is a really big selling tail right here, so I'd expect anything under here to receive a lot of sell pressure. Okay, we'd, f we'd receive a lot of sell pressure under here. Uh, what I do think is the more, more likely to scenario to happen really is these highs right here. If we want to push up, break these highs, and then we look to start selling, that would uh, get me really, really interested. If we want to push down, we could possibly hold LVNs for a little day trade on the upside. We've got some very equal low sitting here on TPO. This is a very interesting area for price to break down, hold, and possibly push and go back to the highs, right? So you notice how we don't just have one idea here based off our plan. As we start putting things on our chart, we can see areas that price might go to, respect, move away from, find another area, respect, move away from that. This is just simple ebb and flow of the market and where it's looking to grab liquidity in certain areas. We'll go back to the bar chart here. Okay, so this is our daily bar chart here. Uh, there's one thing I actually want to look at back in this area. Okay, so we can see on our TPO here, if we look at the volume sides of our TPO, which are the right profiles on every TPO. Okay, we can see down in this area, this is very low volume, right? Pretty much all the way down to here. And then we can see in this area, we also get some more low volume here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mark this out. right here, and I'll just drag this all the way down to here. I just wanna know when we get into this low volume area. Now this is a 12 point range, but this is an important area. Why? There wasn't a lot of exchange in contracts here. So the market will typically come back and balance this area out, make sure it populates this area with exchanges or transactions before it makes a move in a direction. It could come down, consolidate in this area, and make a move down, absolutely. This is a 12 point trading range or an 11 point trading range. I would not look at just front run buying any of this, but I would like to have this on my chart to see what the reaction is once we get down into that area. <clears throat> what I'll do again here is I will copy and move this drawing again. I'll move it down here. And we're down into another low volume area down here. Okay, let's go over to our bar chart and this is what it's looking like so far on our bar chart okay you notice we have a lot of stuff marked very close to price as day traders this is likely what we're going to be looking for anyways when the price action opens up for the coming day so this is what we want to be focusing on right is the stuff closest to price we do have our big picture ideas of you know our buy sides up here our sell sides down here but we want to know what's happening relatively close to price Okay, so now we've gone through the daily bar chart and we've gone through our TPO chart and we've marked up our chart with stuff that we think is valid for the coming days or possibly the coming weeks. Now we have to go back to our bar chart and start dropping down timeframes. I like to go from the daily chart, which we're on right now, down to 
the one hour chart. Okay, so we'll wait for this to load up. All right, let me remove this guy here. Uh, was this guy here? There we go. And we'll actually remove this guy here for now. Okay, now we're into our one minute or uh, one hour chart. We can see we still have all of the markings we had on our daily chart, but we can really focus on what is happening at more current price right now. So on the one hour chart, I would want to mark this pivot high. This is a swing pivot high where price was trending to the upside, short term, long term, depending on what kind of trader you are. This is a short term uptrend to me. And then we turn over and we reverse, we get some downside. This is an established pivot high. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy this. Actually, you know what? We don't have to copy that. We can just drop another one. We'll drop this here. We'll modify the text and I'll say one hour just like that. Okay. So we know that's a potential one hour pivot high where there could be some sort of sweep of liquidity or if people are uh, long down here, they could be looking for targets up in here. Once the longs get their targets in here, what is the order that hits the market? They sell. Okay. When sellers are looking to sell a position, what are they trying to do? What do they see this setup as? Double top, right? Double top, sell, more. Okay, so all of these sells come into the market, right? Tons of sells come into the market here. And big money picks up positions and they get rid of bad retail. This area right here, as soon as, I think my mic just cut out there, sorry guys. This area right here, as soon as price pushes up here and sellers are trying to sell and these guys down here trying to sell as well, as soon as we sweep this, all of their orders turn into buys, right? Buy, 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 breakout traders, buy, 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 big money, uh, depending on what we see in the market, could possibly be looking to sell, 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 the big liquidity. Okay, so that's an area up here we want to mark and we want to keep on, keep on our charts. I really like these lows right here. We saw this on the TPO. I want to keep an eye on these lows. I'm going to mark this out. We'll change this right here. Color. Modify text. One hour. Sell. We'll put that right down there. You see how things are starting to layer on top of each other now? We've got this one hour sell side or sell liquidity down here. We've got this low volume node right below it. So this seems like an area where if price comes down, we break this, we could hold somewhere in this LVN and push to the upside. We're just gonna wait to see what the market does when we get down there. We can't just assume that this is what's gonna happen. We just lay out our charts and then we wait for the setup to come to us, okay? One hour, let's go down to the 15 minute. Okay, we've got the 15 minute here. Uh, we've got that naked volume point of control that we had marked out. We've got a low right here on the 15 minute. We've got a high. I don't see anything right now that I really love on the 15 minute. This could possibly be um, a little short term sweep here. Sweep and possibly get some upside. Um, I don't love it, but the uh, but the trade is possibly there with that NVU POC in the area. So what I'll do is I'll take this again. I'll drop a line down, color, red, modify text, 15 min. Okay. The reason why we're doing this video is too many people are worried about how to click the button and when to click the button, but they don't have a plan to click the button or when to click the button, right? They're just too worried about like, where do I get in? Where do I get in? Um, you don't get in until you make a plan like this and then the market comes to you and then you have a reason to get in, right? 
Okay, so there's the 15 minute. I would not use the five minute, the three minute, or the one minute until the morning. When I'm ready to analyze pre-market price action or ETH price action to look into what could possibly happen and what areas we could possibly move to on the day. So now what do we have? If we just simply look at the 30 minute chart, we'll just take any chart for this example and see what we have on the 30 minute chart. So on the 30 minute chart, we absolutely know that if we want to look for good shorts, we're going to be looking for shorts into 4155s based off our LVN on the TPO and volume profile chart, or we're going to be looking for sweeps over this one hour pivot high and possibly get shorts up in this area. Right now, the trend is up. We're consolidating. If we want to pull back, our first long could possibly be a sweep of 15 minute liquidity. It could be a sweep of 15 minute liquidity, hold LVN. It could be a sweep of this one hour, hold LVN, look for backside trade, and then possibly get a move to the upside. Okay. In the morning, this plan in the short term could change and it could develop into something else based on what has happened in the pre-market uh, session. If we go to the five-minute chart, we could find some even more micro levels to get a few scalp trades off of, but this is really big picture, okay? This is your, your big or bigger picture type trading. One more chart I want to share with you guys, and this is a, a valuable chart for me. I really do like using it. If we go to this guy here, this is going to be our footprint chart. I use this a lot for like rotations, imbalances, and look at intraday price action to see where buyers and sellers are really hitting price. But what I do like to use on these footprint type charts, and I'll show you here, this is the footprint action for today, starting at 930, right around this area. Okay, so this is today's footprint action. Now, if we go back to the left and we go back in time here, and I'll just put a couple rectangles on the chart for now. We look at areas where price had extreme volume previously. For example, this print, lots of volume. This is where its point of control was. We pushed up and we closed up at the highs. So this is where transactions were being had in the past. And look at where the market wants to transact again. It wants to make these transactions within this area of high volume. These are areas that I've noticed and that I like to see retests of, okay? The key, key factor here is we must close well outside of the highest volume area on the print. So for example, highest volume area on the print, we close up here, right? This print right here, highest volume area here, we close within the print. No bueno. Let's look at another area here. This print up at the highs. Highest volume up at the highs, where do we close? Right in the high volume area. I don't like this. I don't want to use it. I want to see price put in lots of volume and close away from that volume so we can come back and retest that balance area of where people were accumulating a position previously. So another example of it is right here. Okay, so we have our highest volume area on this print. Where do we close? Way outside of the volume area. We come back down, we test this guy, we push back up, we reject, we come back down, we test this guy before eventually pushing through this high volume area of wherever or whatever position people were trying to accumulate, which looks like a short-term short in this area. Okay? Now when we look at our charts, we go back to the bar chart. We have a very good idea, if we go to the daily chart, we have a very good idea of what we want to look at for the coming days and possibly weeks, right? Here we go. These are all the areas we want to watch. These are our big macro areas. These are our shorter term areas off, you know, the one hour, the 30 minute, the 15 minute charts that we could look to day trade possibly for the rest of this week or going into next week, depending on the price action. If we just look at these levels that I marked in this area, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days have traded within this area. We could get another 30 days trading in here. We don't know, right? So it's good to have these levels that are sitting really close to price. 
Now guys, listen, this is a high level overview of how to look at your charts and how to mark your stuff up to really see what's going on in the bigger picture. We're just using simple pivots and some volume areas with a little bit of TPO in here to try and get um, you guys marking up your charts on a bigger picture or a more macro type picture. Uh, stop going into trading or going to the trading day without a plan or a layout like this. Uh, if you're the kind of trader who's just going in and looking at the one minute, three minute, five minute chart and saying, oh, hey, I'm, I'm, I have a trade here. This is going to be great. Um, you're trading through a microscope, right? Uh, you're not looking at the big picture. You're not zoomed out looking at where people are positioned on the chart, you know, whether it's your bar chart or it's your TPO chart or it's a footprint chart, you're not seeing where the market is positioned. You're just very much trading through a microscope. You're gonna win some trades, you're gonna lose a lot of trades, and you're probably not gonna be a very good trader. Anyways, guys, I hope this video helped you guys out a little bit. If it did, as always, like, comment, subscribe. I will get back to every single comment that you guys leave on the video. And thank you so much for all the support on the channel. We really do appreciate it. If you guys do want a free trial to the LPR Trading Group uh, chat room, stick around and I'm going to post a link or a discount code down in the comment section below. Thanks guys. Good luck on the, on the charts.